Okay, cool. We're recording. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, thanks for popping in. I know we said we were going to stop in and um, do little videos once a week, but uh, life happens. And uh, Chris had some sur surgery on her shoulder. So how's that going for you, Chris? Are you feeling better? I'm doing great now. Thanks to doTERRA oils, I can honestly say no pain medications were used after leaving the surgery center. It's all been my um, little pain oil blend that I use and uh, some deep blue rub and everything's going great. I'm doing fabulous. The physical therapist thinks it's awesome. So good cool. stuff. Just took me a little while. <laughs> good, 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 good. All right. So we're going to start doing these um, every Wednesday. Uh, Wellness Wednesday is what we're going to call it. And uh, we're just going to dive in and talk about uh, a couple of things. Um, one for me, I was dealing with urinary incontinence for a decade. After I had my son, um, I lost all control of everything down there. It was like the faucet was turned on and I couldn't turn anything off. Super embarrassed, but the nurse said, it's totally normal. It happens to everyone. So I thought, okay, but I didn't feel like in my gut that was normal. So I told my doctor when she came to visit and she's like, yeah, that's totally normal. You're, that's motherhood, welcome. <laughs> and I was just like, oh. So my brain just kind of accepted the fact like, this is what I got to live with. But um, I was, you know, leaking randomly, uh, like hugging people. It wasn't just the normal cough and sneezing. It was hugging people, going on walks, even exercising. And I wasn't like full on, you know, cardio or anything. It was just walking the kid around the block. Um, so I went to my gynecologist after I went back to work and I said, this isn't working for me. And she said, well, let's let me recommend a, uh, I forget what, um, what they're called, but, uh, you know, the people that focus on bladder and the pelvic area. So I'm like, great, let's do that. So I got my appointment. Um, I'm sitting in the waiting room. I'm the youngest patient there. So I thought this is weird. <laughs> um, I go in, talk to the doctor and he's just asking me questions, you know, what my daily life is and you know, what I want to work on. And, uh, I, you know, I, I kind of told him, you know, I'm working out. Um, I, I walked the kid and <laughs> not that I was walking the kid, but I was like pushing him around in the stroller. And, uh, he said, that's good. You know, he's like, I highly recommend doing Kegels, like when you're breastfeeding or driving the car. And I was like, okay, I can do that. But he never did a pelvic exam on me. So he was just basing off of, you know, the symptoms I was telling him. So I did that. I started doing that. And then um, he also asked me if I was planning to have any more kids. And I said, yes, plan to have one more. And he's like, well, don't have any surgery now, because if you have a kid that can completely reverse everything and you'll have to probably have a second surgery. And I was like, no, thank you. So um, after I had Erica, I remember um, there were a lot of commercials floating around about, uh, you know, pelvic mesh uh surgeries that were going wrong and people can now sue and i was like you know what i'm going to take that off the table so i went back to my gynecologist and said what other options do i have and she said physical therapy and i thought oh okay yeah let's do that because i'm thinking the whole time i'm doing my kegels wrong because there was no improvement or you know it didn't get worse after erica but it was still you know annoying so went to physical therapy she was the only one that did a pelvic exam but based off my symptoms she uh showed me a couple of kegel exercises and other exercises um to build up my hip muscles and all that fun stuff so did all that saw some improvement i went from like a, a large pad to a panty liner so i thought okay i guess this is it i'll just keep you know practicing my kegels and it turned out because of this oil community that I'm a part of, um, this woman came into my life. She's a, a doctor of physical therapy, and she focuses on the pelvic floor for women because she went through the same exact thing that I did. And she dealt with it for exactly 10 years and had enough of it and started doing some research because she just didn't like the idea of surgery or injections in our vagina wall or a pill that is gonna have a, a grocery list of side effects that we don't know what's gonna happen to our bodies when we take it for a long period of time. So, um, so she did her research and she discovered that there's two types of vaginas. There's a hyper, 
hypotonic vagina, which is a very relaxed vagina when you know, you're sneezing and coughing and lifting up things, that's gonna cause leakage. And then there's hypertonic vaginas, which is what I had, because every symptom she listed, that was me, that was like walking and, and uh, um, just doing normal daily things and I would leak. So um, she, highly recommended to stop doing kegels altogether because that's what was causing the leakage was the exercises so i was like oh um so i did and then um huge improvement and then on top of that i went to my um sorry about that my model modern essentials book and looked up incontinence because it's listed as an ailment in it and they highly recommended cypress essential oil and ylang ylang so I started one drop of each before bedtime and applied it to my abdomen and the back of my kidneys. And within a week, I stopped using panty liners. I haven't had any random leakage at all. And normally I would like just walking the dog, I would have um, a leak and that is completely stopped. So it's just like miracles in a bottle. Now I did, um, I do have another reference book, um, Advanced Oil Magic, and they also listed these as well as black pepper. And since I had black pepper, I thought, let me add that to the mix. So I started doing that and um, I met like week six, seven, and I haven't had any issues. I mean, it's been amazing. And that's my story. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, thanks for sharing because those are yeah. sometimes hard things to share about and that but we all we all have those issues <laughs> we talked about it nobody wants to know <laughs> nobody wants that but hmm. okay so totally we're going to go totally a different direction with the um, um i'm going to do the flu bomb capsules which i think a lot of people have um have done and used and everything like that it's perfect so i would just kind of yeah so i just thought we would just kind of show you really quick um what i do obviously you can always change things up a little bit whatever works for you mm -hmm. um so i'm just going to do the basic one that i do for my family so i'm just going to hold these oils up if i can without um dropping them off <laughs> so we've got um oh yeah so we've got our on guard and melaleuca excuse me oregano melaleuca lemon peppermint and frankincense Nice. Now, my daughter is actually allergic to oregano, so, so we swap out the oregano for the time, uh, and that works great for her. Smart. Yeah, and, and, and you know, it takes a little bit to figure those things out, so just be patient with yourself and gentle. Not everything is perfect for everybody, so that's why we have so many choices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very exciting for me because I like to do this stuff myself. So, um, so last year at convention, I found this lovely little... Um, essential oil um, capsule holder. Yes. And um, so I was just holding them one at a time and doing them that way. But um, now I just take a little veggie cap and pop it open. Maybe, there we go, pop it open. Mm -hmm. And I just put in, fill my little holder with the veggie caps. Drop in my oils. Now they are right on guard. I guess I can hold it this way. So we're using four drops of on guard for your basic, and two drops of oregano. And then you've got two drops of melaleuca, two drops of lemon. Mm -hmm. Now peppermint, a lot of people only put one drop in. I put two in because it, I do get a little bit of heartburn. Mm -hmm. um, and then a drop of frankincense. Nice. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if you're swapping out the oregano for the time, same amount of drops, so two drops, two drops. Um, close up the veggie caps. The other thing I do is I, kind of keep these on hand a little bit. So I just have a little plastic container like this and I just put a Kleenex in it because sometimes they leak. Mm -hmm. And so you can see, oh, I just keep oh. my little guys in there. Oh, I love it. And when I need them, yeah, I've got it right there. I don't have to go through the whole process of putting them together. So um, I don't do them a whole bunch in advance, but um, I try to keep them around and that makes me quicker to use them. Mm -hmm. um, Another recipe that people use is what they call the z pack like the zithromycin that you get from the doctor, um, which doesn't always work. Like my daughter used to have to go and get a second z pack which you then you put all those antibiotics and killed all the flora in your gut and you have to start over there. So that's why this is a much healthier way to go if you can. Um, the z pack capsules, people uh, 
the recipe that I have found that works really well is to use six drops of On Guard, three of your oregano or the thyme, and then a drop of frankincense. Um, now on the, both of these recipes, if you're, if you already have it, you're really not feeling good already, I would say every two hours. If not, if you're just starting to get that sore, sore scratchy throat, sometimes I can take one and I'm fine. Sometimes I'll do like one every four hours, depending on what's going on around me also. Right. So like if I'm, I work in a hospital, so a lot of times you'll just have a lot of people coming through there with coughing and stuff and mm -hmm. touching your things. <laughs> <laughs> I get up my hand sanitizer and spray everything down. After they, mm -hmm. um, the other thing that a lot of people do is do the, um, the roller box. So um, for the flu bomb, and that recipe is basically the same thing. You're using six drops of On Guard, um, six of Melaleuca, six of lemon, three oregano or thyme, and three of Frank. And then of course, you'll top it off with your fraction of coconut oil. I will say though that um, when you watch the fraction of coconut oil, I uh, just really quick on the shoulder thing, using so much of the oil a couple, several times a day, jojoba oil is a little more gentler on the skin. So you mm -hmm. can switch up your carrier oils and it, it um, helps with the skin if you're having to use it a lot. So obviously you're rolling, you're rolling the flu bomb capsule with the SEO on your, um, on the bottoms of your feet. Okay. So you've got your, so that's a little tougher area, but um, for yeah. skin, just remember you can do those a little bit different different carrier oil so so that's what I have for um for flu bombs cool those are awesome tips I actually learned something today thank you <laughs> <laughs> awesome all right well thanks everyone I hope that resonated with you or you got something out of it um I, that's what we have for you today so we'll see you next Wednesday uh with new topics and uh yeah we'll go from here all right thanks everybody bye, bye.